This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video I'm going to be going over radio setup. Now, this is not the most exciting, flashy topic with bangs and explosions, but it's one of the most important fundamental skills that you will need as a bot builder to be able to get your bot to be controllable and easily drive it to victory. So I'm going to be going over how to do that setup in today's video with the FSI-6, which is the budget transmitter that I'd recommend anybody get if they're just getting into the sport, and the Radio Master Zorro, both because it's the upgrade that I would recommend for most people. Having a 4-in-1 multi-protocol module, this radio will also work with almost any brand's receiver on the market, so it's really flexible and fantastic for if you want to broaden your horizons past just Fly Sky branded stuff. Um, it also has software that's almost identical across Radio Master, across um, Jumper and across the Teneris series from FR Sky, they pretty much all use some variation of the OpenTX software, which means programming on this radio is almost identical as to almost any other radio out there using OpenTX or a branch of it, in this case, EdgeTX. What exactly am I going to cover in today's video? Well, to start off with, we're going to take a look at an SSP kit as an example of a four-wheel drive bot with two motors for drive that has a dual speed controller, dual brushed speed controller in it for brushed motors. Now the unique thing about using a dual speed controller is that a lot of them have mixing built in, including the one in this bot, which is basically identical to the uh, dual brushed DSCs that I sell. It just has slightly different firmware on it. I'll get over that in a bit. Um, but this dual brushed speed controller I sell at justcuzzerobotics.com and it is about $25 currently and comes like you see here with an XT30 power connector, JST motor connections, and a 3-pin and a 1-pin signal wire connections. I also sell a more expensive $50 Terracan. This is the Terracan speed controller. It's also a dual brushed motor speed controller. This one can work at a higher voltage. While the budget's limited to 4S, this is limited to 6S. It also has a few other bells and whistles that are nice to have and both of them can handle about the same current but this one is also a lot lighter and flatter um, and it can also handle uh, current limiting and has low voltage cutoff and a few other nice fancy features that are lacking on this guy. Um, the settings changing process for this you can do with your radio Whereas with the Terracan, you can't really mess with the settings so much other than to switch it from mixed to not mixed by using a solder jumper here. But there are a few other settings you can change on this guy, such as enabling and disabling braking and a couple other things that I'll get into later. I'm going to look at two different archetypes of robots. We've got Division here. Division is a two-wheel drive vertical spinner, and its radio programming will be pretty much identical to that that you would see on almost any robot with a spinning weapon and two-wheel or four-wheel drive using two motors. On the other hand, you've got SSP or SSP kit here. Um, this is, you know, obviously not completed because I'm going to show the process for dealing with the servo and stuff in this video. Um, but for SSP, this is a bot with brushed motors and it is using regular dual brushed speed controller to power both motors. So there's onboard mixing on the speed controller which makes the radio programming very different. It also uses a servo arm as the weapon. So this is obviously going to be different programming to make the servo do what you want versus a spinning weapon like you'd see on Division. Since this is positionally controlled, whereas a spinner is just speed controlled. So I'm going to be going over basically how I do programming for SSP primarily, and then at the end I'll touch on the changes that I make for division and what's needed to do your own mixing on the radio versus letting the speed controller do it for a dual brushed speed controller. Now before I get into that, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor PCBWA. Now don't skip ahead because I do have an important message to discuss here. Tutorial videos are some of the most laborious content to make on my channel, and they also tend to get some of the worst views because watching Mobots kill each other is a lot more exciting to a general audience than how to program a radio for driving your own robot. But I think it's very important to the Combat Robotics community that I continue to produce tutorials like this, and PCBWay makes it possible for me to get paid to do that even if nobody watches the video at all. So huge thanks to PCBWay for making this channel possible to keep producing amazing tutorials and guides like this one, which hopefully you appreciate because I spent about 
eight hours editing and another two hours of the last three days filming just for this one video. Guys and Trails really take a lot more time than some of the other content that I make, so it's amazing that I can do this and still get paid for it thanks to PCBWay for making that possible. And make sure to check them out if you need any CNC machining, 3D printing, or PCB fabrication in the near future. All right, let's start off with SSP or any other two brushed motor dual, or actually it can be four brushed motors if you wire them in parallel, but a, anything powered by a dual speed controller like this or like this. Now, this speed controller is an early sample that I got and it's got a little few, a few differences. So for the sake of this video, let's swap it and I'll show you how to do the radio connections on the receiver as well as motor connections and everything else using an out of the box brand new one. And then you'll see exactly what the, what the setup procedure would be if you bought an SSP kit today or if you were to just buy this speed controller and try and use it with any of the motors that I sell on my website in the same fashion. Now, for the SSP kit, uh, normally you would cut these connectors off and solder them directly to the backs of the motors, but I'm looking into stocking and selling these uh, mating JST connectors that I have on this one so it's easier to quick swap everything. So, let's start by turning on the radio. It's complaining about the switches not being in their upright positions. Um, and now I'm going to turn on the robot with the power switch on the bottom. So right now we've got green light and a blinking blue light on the receiver. So in FS2, or sorry, in SSP, I have an FS2A receiver kind of built onto the motherboard, but if you had it separate, that would be the same thing, or you might see similar behavior from any other receiver. When it comes to different receivers, you kind of have to RTFM, read the effing manual, and figure out what the behavior should be for the lights or whatever else you have, and also to figure out your binding procedure. On this receiver, the binding procedure is extremely simple. All that you need to do is hold that black button when you turn it on. So turn it off. Hold the black button down, turn it back on, and now we see a rapid flashing. And then for the radio, it's the same thing on the FSI 6. You turn it off, you hold down the bind button, turn it back on, and now we see a slow flash. Turn this off and on again, and boom, it's bound. Now we don't have anything connected, so I can't show you that it's bound, but you'll see in a minute. Um, so let's start doing some connections, shall we? Let's plug in our drive speed controller and we'll plug in our motors. Now, I'm going to put the M1 over on, let's call it my, I'm gonna put M1 on the right motor and M2 on the left motor. If we're wrong about this, nothing bad happens. It just means that our controls are a little wonky and we can fix that later. And then for these plugs, Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting the three pin connector in black to the outside whoop. And with only that in I, can't, whoop. I thought my tape was wide enough With only that in I only have a steering control because that's channel one and I plug in the yellow to get my forward and backward throttle control. And now we've got forward and backward as well as left and right. Now, if I put this robot on the ground right now, it's probably not gonna do what I want. All right, so right now, the robot won't drive correctly. First of all, when I push left, it turns left. When I push right, it turns right. If I go forward, it goes forward. If I go backward, it turns backward. But you'll notice it's kind of curving off to one side when I go forward and backward. That is something that is fixed with trim. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the spot back on my little test stand here, which in this case is literally a roll of tape. And we are going to see what happens when I push the stick up slowly, forward drive stick. You'll notice that left motor is going, well, I guess if I look at it this way, the right motor is going, but the left isn't until I get, do this. I really need something smaller than this tape, hold on. Alrighty, I'm gonna start over for a bit. So, let's say you've got a bot like SSP or any other bot that uses this dual brush speed controller. You've got two brushed motors, I'm trying to set it up so it drives the way you want. 
You might notice with this dual brush speed controller, the first time you plug it in and set up your motors, that when you push forward, one motor starts before the other. In this case, I've got motor on this side starting before the other. So if I flip the robot around, the way I like to look at it is this is like the right side, this is like the left side. Some people prefer looking at it the other way and like this is left, this is right, whatever. Um, so if I push forward, basically I'm seeing the right side start first. If I want to try and fix that, we can do something called trimming. Now I'm going to go into the view, so hit OK, hold OK, go down to go over to function setup, hit OK, and I'm going to go down to display and hit OK, and this shows us basically what every channel on the radio is doing. So you'll see we've got channels. Channel 1 is the up down here. Oh, sorry, channel 1 is the left right here. Channel 2 is up and down. Channel 3 is up and down here, which I use to control my servo. And channel 4 doesn't do anything right now because it's the left right in here. And then channels 5 and 6 are actually these knobs, VRA and VRB, but those won't do anything for an SSP kit. Um, so basically the problem that we have is when we part, start imparting channel 2, only one motor goes when both should go, because this guy is basically mixing the signals from channels 1 and 2 together for us. So what we want to do is basically make it act as if the bot is trying to steer one way or the other with trim. So we're essentially going to be biasing the signal from channel 1, which again is this left right to try and compensate for which motor is starting first. So you adjust the trim with these little momentary switches. And that just adds basically to your signal. So if I push forward a little bit, Now I'm seeing the left side goes first because I trimmed it a little too far. You kind of have to play with this over and over a bit. It might also behave slightly differently when it's actually on the ground. So if I go really slowly, I can still probably get one to start before the other. But I don't know when in a real combat situation you would do that. And make sure that it's doing what you want. Obviously the best way is to test drive it, so I don't have the lid on or anything, but I'm just going to put the bot on the floor here so you can see what happens when I push forward and backwards slowly and then quickly. So when I push really slowly, it still kind of turns. So I'm going to push it a bit more. Now one thing you'll notice is it's going to spin faster towards the side that we biased it towards than the other side. If you want to fix that, there's a couple ways to deal with that. First way would be if we go to our endpoints. So let me get the bot back up on my test stand here. Endpoints do exactly what it says on the tin. They allow you to adjust the maximum and minimum states of each channel. So right now I can go to 100% on every channel in both directions. To adjust this, you'll see you basically need to push the stick to the side you want and then do up and down. And if it's channel 2, if I press OK, it brings it to the next channel. And then this one now is the one I'm changing, right? So I'm going to hit OK to cycle through back to channel 1. And we basically just want these to sound the same. So that one's a little slower, so I'm going to make it go up. It doesn't seem to affect it. You can see that. Oh, I might have been because I was pushing down slightly.
All right, so those sound about the same now, so I think that's good. Now I'm gonna hold cancel to confirm because the FSI 6 is designed by idiots and that's what you need to do to confirm changes. Um, let me talk quickly about reverse. Reverse is nice because it lets you reverse channels. So if you had like your left motor plugged in backwards or something and you weren't mixed, then you could reverse like this. So now I push forward and backward, everything's fine. But when I push left, it now turns the wrong way. Um, so I'm gonna cycle over to channel three because on SSP kit and for a lot of servos like lifters, if you have the servo mounted on this side like I do, then when you connect your arm, I'm gonna put this in the middle of travel. If I connect my servo arm, when I push up, the arm goes down. When I push down, the arm goes up. So to fix that, I'm just gonna take channel three, which is controlling a servo, and reverse it. Hold cancel to confirm. And now I can set this to the position that I want. And then, so you can see it's a little bit too far down. I want it to be maybe like here. So then I can go into my endpoints and I go to channel three down and I can just make it so that it's a smaller number so that the arm starts to raise up. So you notice the sticks all the way down, but that's changing where that full down position really is. So it's an easy way to handle your servo endpoints. And then I'll hold cancel to confirm. I'm going to do that again for the up position. That's obviously too far. I'll just set it way too low and then bring it back to where I think is comfortable. So I think probably about there is probably good. So I'll just hold cancel to confirm that. And there we go. So now we've got my servo travel so that it does exactly what I want. And again, I can change this endpoints a little too high. Just make that a little lower or whatever on the fly. All right, I switched over to the Terracan because I was having a few weird glitches with that other speed controller, um, trying to tune things more precisely. Um, Terracan seems to behave a little bit more consistently, so we'll stick with that for now. Brand new radio model, and there's some other things that I'd like to adjust to make driving a little bit easier. So that's where our dual rate and EXP come in. These are the two things that basically just the feel of how this bot will drive. So for instance, my channel one is steering. If I change the rate, that basically just reduces the maximum and minimum that I can turn. So this is the speed at 60, raising it, 80, 90, 100. So you can see that turning speed is like maxed out. If I reduce it, eventually you get to the point where the bot like barely turns. So now the bot turns really sluggishly, which I'm not a huge fan of, so I'm gonna bring it back up. So my exponential starts to change the curve of this. So if I push up, you'll notice that curve starts to form. That basically is making it so that it has a sharper incline close to the center position. So that means that I only have to push the stick a little bit to get it to go really fast. Whereas if I bring the exponential back down to zero or negative, you have to push the stick a lot further for it to start to go. If I make it really negative, I can probably make this a lot clearer. Oh, I'm sorry, I was adjusting steering. I don't know what I'm doing. So now I have to push it really far for it to start to turn at negative. Some people prefer that, some people don't. If I push it positive, like really positive, it starts to turn at a lower and lower stick position, basically. So holding the stick in roughly the same place. While I reduce that, basically adjusts how little movement is required to get that full turning. So high exponential means a little stick movement gives you a lot of throttle, and a low exponential or negative exponential means you need a lot of stick travel 
to get the same amount of throttle. So yeah, basically the dual rate and EXP adjust your feel, more or less. They adjust how much stick travel translates to how much movement, and your uh, dual your rate is basically the same as just adjusting your endpoints symmetrically. So like here I have it so that channel one is a little faster that way. So for some reason my robot was turning slower to the right than to the left. I could push this direction up or push this one down to make those even out. Um, whereas dual rate, your rate is adjusting both at the same time. So you're plus or minus 75 instead of plus or minus 100. All right, I wanna repeat everything I just did, but now with the Radio Master Zorro. So I'm gonna create a new model. To start off with, we have to bind it. So once again, we hold down the black button on our FS2A receiver or follow the directions for your receiver's manual. We've got model 10 now. And we are going to scroll down to, aha. All right, so internal RF, multi, type, has to be FlySky 2A for an FS2A. Um, and then we can just hit bind. And then, whoops, hit bind again. And we've got the ability to control the robot. Um, so now we've bound. We now need to set our endpoints for that servo. As you saw, that was crazy. All right, so sorry about the footage looking a little wonky. Um, I had to change the Radio Master settings uh, to make this even visible, the screen even like properly visible. And if you go into System, and then over a couple pages, there's a ton of awesome settings you can adjust. Um, so, for instance, you can set the haptics and beep volumes and stuff. Uh, one thing that's helpful is setting your battery low uh, voltage, and you can also change it so that the splash screen is different lengths of time. So I set it to off. So now, if I turn this off and back on. It comes on a little faster. Um, so that's helpful. Um, so yeah, setting up a new model from scratch with the Radio Master Zorro or some other OpenTX radio. I'm going to try and do this while it's down and you can kind of see it. Sorry about the strobing, that's just uh, because of the backlight on this, I had to reduce the brightness in order to make it show up on camera without blowing out everything else. And it's still kind of brighter than everything else because it's producing its own light. That's just how cameras do be sometimes. So we're going to go into model and page over. Like I just showed for your binding, you get your internal RF to FlySky 2A. In my failsafe not set, it doesn't matter because the uh, FS2A ignores everything you do on here. So I'm just going to set it to no pulses so it stops complaining about failsafe not being set. Um, it's already showed your internal RF to multi FlySky 2A and then bind to be able to bind, etc, etc. Um, one nice thing about the Zora is you can do a range test actually. Uh, it doesn't work with the FS2A, but some receivers have two-way feedback and they'll give you a number there that's like higher for higher signal strength and lower for lower signal strength. Um, so if we go over a page, we get heli setup stuff, we can ignore all of this. Over another page, flight modes, we can ignore all of that. Over another page, we go to inputs. Now this is the juicy stuff that we want. So inputs affect basically which stick does what. So if I push forward, that is channel two. If I push left and right on this right stick, that is channel one. In this case, they're named AIL and ELE. Uh, that is because they are for airplanes. That would be your aileron and your throttle. So I'm just going to go to edit, name. All right, so we got channel one, channel, or sorry, channel one, channel two, and then channel three is our servo, basically. I don't know why I bothered with that, but just to make it a little bit simpler for everyone. I'm going to go over a page. You'll be able to see our channel one, channel two, channel three. So this is channel two, this is channel one, this is channel three, like I said. Four is the side to side on this, which we're not going to use for anything here. Um, and then you've got some other things like your switches and your dials, but those aren't configured yet, so we're not going to worry about those. Um, in order 
to do something actually useful with this, we are going to need to set up our mixing and outputs and stuff. So if we go over, <clears throat> we just were at inputs, now we've got mixes and outputs. So for now we're going to ignore mixes and we're just going to look at outputs. So the outputs are basically what is actually going to the physical channels on the radio. So we've got channels 1, 2, and 3 are the ones that we're concerned with here. Um, so if you go in and hit edit for an output, um, you've got the ability to change the direction so you can invert it. You've got the ability to apply a curve, which would be one you've already configured. We're not going to worry about that right now. So you can either invert or have your direction normal. And you can change your min and max and your sub trim and everything. So this is basically like the dual rate and or a little bit like your, your endpoints, rather not dual rate. So this lets you set your endpoints for a channel and lets you reverse it like you would on the FSI 6. Um, if we go back a page on our mixes, we hit edit. This lets us apply exponential. So if we put curve to expo, this, uh, whoops, I don't know what that does. This number affects the exponential for that channel, just like we showed on the FSI 6. So for channel one, like our steering, so if I make this really high, versus really low. So here, uh, it's kind of reversed from how it is on the FSI 6, so a negative number makes it so that a little stick travel does a lot, and a positive number makes it so that a lot, only a lot of stick travel does a lot. So that's let you adjust the feel of your steering or what have you to how you'd like it. So that's something you can play with on here. And that's within your mixes. Uh, mixing also lets you do a ton of other really complicated stuff if you really want to, but I'm not going to get into that right now. We've got your outputs, and then we've got curves. You can define curves with C, like the exponential curve on here too, or you can do something that's not even exponential and something fancy. I'm not going to worry about that. Logical switches, special functions, you don't need to worry about that or your display or anything else. So really, the only screens you really care about are your model, setup, inputs, mixes, outputs. So for the sake of like an SSP kit or something simple like that, your mixes allow you to do two things that are helpful. Number one is it lets you change basically which stick or dial or switch is going to that output. So for instance, let's say I'm a complete idiot and I want to make it so that this dial controls my throttle. If I just hit the little thing on there and then I start moving that dial, now that's what controls my uh, steering. So now I can do forward, backward here and then steering up here. Obviously I don't want that, so I'm going to hit OK and do left and right to make it channel 1 again. Um, you can see you also have this list of everything. You've got your inputs, your sticks, your pots, which are the dials. That just stands for potentiometer, and then some other compli complicated stuff. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as channel 1. Um, but you can see how this allows you to do a bajillion things and then even crazier with mixing is you can add and subtract channels from each other which is how you essentially get the behavior that we have on here if you're using two single speed controllers or, or disable mixing on the speed controller itself. Once again going over trims on here now I've got my channel monitor up um, so you just hit next page etc etc. Nice thing about this is it shows you exactly what you're doing with your inputs, outputs, switches, and everything on the screen, which is kind of helpful. Um, so here is like the, basically like the display was on the FSI 6. You can see that's channel 2, this is channel 1, this is channel 3, etc, 
etc. And then this is channel four. Um, uh, if you go over to here, this is showing the actual outputs, I believe. So you can see if I trim this, So you can see that turned into a seven. So I trimmed it up like 19 or whatever. So this is my actual output. But if I go back a page, oh no, this is showing the output. Okay, no, no. So this is showing the output as well. This is, however, only showing your inputs and your trims like that. So you can see your outputs like this or as numbers. Plus of 100 to minus 100, basically. So let me show how to do the servo endpoints thing with this radio. Um, now for outputs, you can see we get an actual plus or minus 100. So um, if I want to go to channel 3, edit, um, I'm going to say my minimum... <laughs> And you can change this on the fly, of course, while you're driving around if you really want to. So here you can see the uh, arm's not really touching the floor. So now it's doing basically what I want with the arm. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, we've probably got that same issue where one side starts before the other. Let's see if we can fix this in our <clears throat> input. We can change the offset, which kind of acts like the trim a little bit. <laughs> Alright, that's closer. Now let's see if we can fix the rest with trim. better on the ground. Yeah, that's not too bad now that I have it on the ground. So, I think that'll help a lot, just having it on, uh, just having the steering input offset a little bit, and then add your trim on top of that. Alright, so I said I wanted to go over stuff for division as well, so the setup for division is obviously very different than SSP because I don't have a servo, instead I have a spinner, and I also have individual speed controllers on drive, so that means that I needed to do mixing on the radio. Alright, so I wanted to go over for division how I do my drive mixing and my weapon setup. So I still actually haven't done the weapon setup, so I'll try and do that live here, but for the drive, basically what I have is... On my inputs, I left it, I basically set it so that everything is the default. Um, then on my mixes, I did, if you hold down and set insert after, then you can add stuff. So, for instance, I set this to be added to throttle. Um, and then each of these has their own offset and weight, etc. So, multiplex is now replace. So that's basically an override. <clears throat> so with that switched down, we're good. And then I can have it do that and that to reverse the direction. And I can change which switch it is, of course, easily enough. Um, now. One thing I want to do is in my model setup, I can set it so that when it starts up, I get a switch warning on each switch. So I want my F to warn if it's... I basically want to start, force it to start in one of these. So if I turn off the radio, 
Now when I turn this on, I get a throttle warning, and then I have the, the switch's armed warning. So it forces me to, to have it be safe every time. Alright, so it looks like the bot's doing what I want now. So, you can kind of see the motor spinning. If I flip, if I push up on the stick, nothing happens. I flip my arming switch. Motor spins one way. It's spinning, you know, that way. And then if I flip this switch, it's now spinning the other way. So I can flip it again, and it's spinning this way now. So yeah, obviously I have the weapon belt off for safety reasons. And I can drive it on the ground as well. <clears throat> With the mixing as shown before, You can see it's drifting a little bit to one side, but I can trim that out. I'm going to trim it to the right. So yeah, that's uh, Division's new brush drive for you. Now I'm using single speed controllers on each side. They're actually AM32 brushless speed controllers flashed with a brushed firmware uh, because that was what I could find that was small enough to fit and would work. And they've been working pretty well in my testing so far, actually. I've got AM32 on drive and weapon now, though it's brushed on drive and brushless on weapon. All right, so I wanna cover some of the advanced stuff that I showed on the Zorro on this FSI 6 as well. So, probably not going to be able to see the screens of both of these at the same time, but um, one of the reasons that I bought the Zorro in the first place is because of the added safety features that I could implement on it to make division safer. So like I showed, I made it so that when you turn this on, it warns about having the throttle and the arming switch in a certain position. Now, you can do an arming switch setup on the FSI 6, but unfortunately with the FSI 6, no matter what you do, every time you turn this on, you're forced to place all switches in the upright position, as well as the throttle in the down position. So, the problem that I have with this is with Division, this doesn't let you do the complicated stuff that you do on the Zorro where you can make it so that a switch flips an entire channel from going from 0 to 100 and 0 to minus 100. This guy, you can't really do that. You, If you want a bi-directional weapon, you have to have the stick in the middle position as the off. So the problem with that is, if you have a problem with your robot and you restart your controller in the middle of a fight, now your weapon's spinning in full reverse if you have a bi-directional weapon. Um, so that's not great. So you'd think, okay, that's fine. I'll just enable an arming switch. So to set up an arming switch, you can just go to throttle hold. And we're gonna say the hold value is on. So, all right, cool, we've got throttle hold. Now, how do I enable that? We go to switches assign and you Basically, just hit OK to cycle through to throttle hold, and you sign which switch you want to it. So let's say I want my arming switch to be switch B here. So I'll set it to switch B. I'll switch these to something else. So now my throttle hold is switch B. Wait, is that switch A? My bad. I throw hold switch B. Um, now I have it so that my hold value is on, is engaged, or my hold value is not engaged. That's all well and good. But um, whenever I flip the switch down, it's engaged. And when I flip the switch up, it's not engaged. And when you turn on the transmitter, it forces you to push the switch up again. So you are forced to engage the weapon every time you power on anyway. 
So it doesn't work nearly as nicely um, as a safety feature, but it still makes it so that you, if you turn your transmitter on first, you can flip that switch down and then push your stick into the middle position. And now the weapon won't be active until you flip the switch up again. So that's how you can do an arming switch on the FSI-6, though it's a little bit janky because it doesn't let you actually put your switch in the disarmed position when you turn on the transmitter for some stupid reason. All right, <clears throat> one quick final thing before I go. Doing mixing, drive mixing on the FSI-6, it's a little bit weird compared to on the Zorro. So I have, right now the, uh, bunch of speed controllers that I got in my latest batch for some reason don't let you disable mixing so I switched back to my old one and I disabled mixing on this. So what you need to do is go to function setup and go down not to mix but to Elevon mixing and then you just switch this on and then you can I think these start at 50% 50% that will work but you can play around with these numbers to basically adjust like <laughs> how much steering is applied and how much uh, throttle is applied, so... Oh, and the other thing you need to do is, for some reason I found... Right now I have uh, motor 1 is the right side motor and motor 2 is the left side motor. Um, and I found that I needed to reverse channel 2 to get the motors to spin the correct direction for this. So, to get the mixing to work correctly on here, you reverse channel 2, then go to Elevon, switch it on, and then you can adjust these percentages to whatever you'd like. And then you get mixing on the FSI-6. This video is already way too long to go into more detail. All right, I am super done with editing this video. It's the only thing that I've been doing all day today. So make sure to click like if you like this video. Comment down below if there are other tutorials you'd like to see in the future. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified if those come out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Oh, and also to the like three people who actually make it this far in the video, let me know in the comments as well, because I'm pretty sure that like 1% of people who click on this video will actually watch to the end.